own. How the narcissist sees you. I'm going to provide you with insight into the way that the narcissist regards you. It's important to remember that what I am describing is the perspective of an aware narcissist. So that would cover the extremely rare, greater and ultra narcissists. With regard to the much more prolific, lesser and mid-range narcissists, they that are unaware, this is the prevailing mindset that takes place in their unconscious. It is this way because this is what drives the various behaviours. All narcissists seek the prime aims of fuel and control, character traits and residual benefits. Therefore, there are the same motivators, the same mindsets, similar approaches to enable us to achieve these things. Yes, there are differences with regard to the manipulations, differences in function, which are affected by the way the narcissism has evolved and the intelligence and access to resources that the particular narcissist has. But at the heart, at the seat, at the core of the HQ, where the operations of the narcissist are governed, there is the same mindset. Less from mid-range don't know it, but it's there. And this is how the narcissist sees you. I want to own you. I want to draw you into my world. A world of my creation so that I am able to always control you. A world where my rules are the only rules that matter. When I first set eyes on you, I make it my business to ascertain your suitability for ownership. You might only be owned in the sense of a tertiary source that I actually interact with the once, or repeatedly, but in a very limited way. But in that moment, whether it is a few seconds or a few minutes, I own you, I control you, and I own the fuel that flows from you. I own the right to take your character traits and acquire them for myself and to use as I see fit. I own the right to access a whole host of residual benefits that you can provide to me. I wish to brand you as my property, my appliance, my plaything. I own you, and this means that nobody else can. I have exclusive rights. I may designate you the role of secondary source should you make the grade and you become mine, subject to the unwritten contract that governs our relationship. You are to be loyal, obedient, compliant. You are to remain under my control. You must not threaten my control, for if you do, I will be forced to act, to keep that control and nullify your threat, and understand this, I always achieve that through one method or another. You are to provide me with fuel. You are to provide me with character traits. You are, like any other appliance, to provide me with residual benefits of my choosing. If you are to be my primary source, that coveted position of supplier-in-chief of the most precious and desired aspects of the prime aims, then you also must be owned. You must be subjected to my total and hegemonic control. Once I decide that you are the one, I will not stop. Once that light has turned green, once the first tantalizing drops of your fuel have begun to be sucked up by me, there is no hope for anything else. You must be mine. I must own you.
you may think that I look upon you with lovelorn eyes. Indeed, I do, as I turn my precious orbs into the mirrors which give you what you want to see. Behind their silvery gaze, my machined machinations are forming. I am absorbing how you smile, how you wrinkle your nose, how you play with your hair on the left side of your head, never the right. I listen to the way that you say scone. Do you say it so it rhymes with tone or with gone? Every word that will come from your mouth will belong to me. I want to know everything about you. Every facet of your life must now belong to me. When my hand touches you, and you feel that jolt of electricity between you and me, that is my connection with you as I begin to download your life. It is true that I have, in some form, already screened you, probed your life from a distance, made enquiries, and observed before launching my takeover bid. I have done my homework, but now I want to dominate, conquer, and subsume. I must envelop you in my world, for then I can ensure that you will provide me with the prime aims as I require, that you are loyal, reliable, and functional. Steadily, I will drain your identity from you, consuming it for my own use. This is part of the process of owning you. I know no boundaries, I see no limits, I recognize no restraint. I have decided that you are to belong to me, and thus this is what must happen with the steady and incremental accumulation of what you are. I am plugged into you, the ultimate parasite which sucks the life from you. Your money becomes my money, your house becomes my house, your friends become my appliances. There is no real me. There is no substance, and thus I must steal what you are in order to give the appearance of substance. The only way that I understand to do this is to own you to make you part of the fabricated world that I have woven. This dazzling fiction fools so readily, and as I part the curtain and beckon you into my wonderland, you accept, and once inside, you become mine. Your world is left behind. Your world of rules, standards, procedures, and fairness is no longer applicable to you. I own you now, and as a consequence, you are subject to my capricious nature, the arbitrary application of my dictats and pronouncements. None of it will make any sense to you when you start to realize what is happening, but it will be far too late by then. Your assimilation into me will be so far gone that you may just as well scream, and in return the only voice that you will hear screaming is mine. My ownership means I tell you who to speak to and who to ignore. My ownership means that that dress is wrong and that one is right, until, of course, it is the other way round, and I denied that I had suggested the other dress to begin with. Yesterday is tomorrow, which becomes today. You think Joseph K. endured the Kafkaesque nightmare of nothing making sense. You ain't seen nothing yet. I must control everything in this world, my space, time, and the environment around you. This is why to you I seem to operate as if I have no concept of time. But that is because I do not operate to Greenwich Mean Time, but rather being mean and time. I compartmentalize, shifting between worlds which must never connect, where the players and actors inside of them move to my direction. They dance to the tune that my invisible pipe plays. I must not leave anything to chance. I do not like chance. It is the ruin of me. I want predictable, and eventually you will come to realize that there are few who are as predictable as my kind. We bring excitement, we bring chaos, we bring drama, but it is all so predictable. 
the same manipulations, which is variations on a theme. Some of us have more string to our dark Cupid's bow, but the poisoned arrows we fire all have the same effects to achieve the prime aims. It is only by ensuring that we own you that we can be assured and convinced that you will do as we want you to, that you will not be disloyal or a traitor to us. We must plug you in to us, and like some giant leech, suck the very essence from you, taking your fuel, controlling you, absorbing you, taking your confidence, your self-worth, your self-esteem, and stripping you of them to ensure that you are under our control. I want to own you so that I know that I will win. I want to own you so that I can exist. I want to own you so that everything you do is a consequence of my decisions and my actions, which ensure that you provide me with my lifeblood whenever I demand it. You are on control and on call and on demand, my primary source of the salvation, the reason for our existence. And I cannot allow the slightest chink of autonomy for fear of losing that control. I want to own you, to underline my superiority. I want to own you to remind myself of my power. I want to own you so it is repeatedly highlighted that I am the controller. I want to own you to stop being the slave that I am. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.